Uh, today, I'm going to be taking a look at this uh, television I bought off of eBay. Um, this is what I would call a generic model. It, uh, this one happens to be Electro brand, um, but as I will show you, these are pretty ubiquitous. Uh, and if you search black and white portable radio TV, you're, you're going to see a ton of listings for essentially this exact same television. Um, I've got the box here but I did actually already open it and I tried to film that, but it didn't go very well due to a spider crawling out of it. So I've actually got the vacuum ready in case uh, any other critters come out of this, this eBay box. So um, yeah, I already took out all the good stuff. There's the instruction manual and some foam. We also got this charger block and 12 volt car charger um three and a half millimeter to i don't know if that's coax or generic antenna another antenna input so that's cool but what we're here for is the generic tv itself many of you probably have seen these you probably you might have one, and you probably do if you you stumbled upon to my channel. Um, yeah, this one, I'll admit, looks to be quite clean. I don't know if it's been used. Um, mm, a bit wonky right there on the contrast dial, but that's really not unusual. So yeah, I guess um, we'll plug it in, see how it looks. First, oops, it's already on. I was going to say, first thing to do is turn the volume down, just in case. Let's see. Let's see if we can get any interesting static. Sorry for the flickering, guys. I have no idea how to adjust the frame rate on my uh, my camera. Really have absolutely no idea. Um. All right, well, not much image on there. So uh, let's go ahead, wound down a bit. Not a good reason to have the vacuum right there. All right, let's plug in one of these. Retro play.
our video input is not not normal composite. Um, so let's test some of these accessories then. All right, well, it's not going to work. So that's that. Okay, so turns out this thing does not have um, composite input which is a bummer, but I have seen that before. The important thing, if we can focus here, the important thing in this case is that right there, see the video signal is NTSC, which means it'll work for our purposes. So with that, there's no reason not to bust this thing open and see how it compares to the other little TVs of this type that I have. It's just like an actual Macintosh. Except you don't need the world's longest screwdriver. Or a T15. We are in, and right away I can see that the speaker is a bit of a pain in the butt right now. Let's see if we can get you guys a look at that. Let's see that wire uh, right there. All right, that is the grounding wire going to the CRT um, frame, and uh, yeah, it got caught in the hot glue of the speaker. 
Let's see. Just a label up there. Serious pain in the butt. Ooh, just barely wiggled it free. All right. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There it is. And that spider. All right. Well, certainly now I have to discharge it um, before I go any further. All right, well, I didn't see any shocks or hear any shocks. Um, we'll listen to the recording from my crappy little Bluetooth, whatever, wireless mic in a little bit. Uh, well, you guys are hearing it live, I'm sure. Seen one on there like that. Oh my god, I've never seen one that difficult to get out. Whew. That was
was annoying. All right. All right, there is a familiar sight. Uh, now I'm going to have to disconnect the battery wires down in there to get the rear case off. And um, hmm, I'm not sure what I want to do with the speaker yet. So that's to be determined. But I definitely want to get it as out of this case as possible. So I will continue to do that now. Okay, I successfully desoldered the speaker wire, and then I also remembered to clip the battery wires down there. Um, and now I can finally show what I find so interesting about these uh, generic black and white CRTs. This is actually the third one that I've had. Um, I'm assuming the tube is manufactured in the same place, and obviously the case. Uh, and the case is identical on all of them. But the PCBs of the uh, analog board and the radio board, um, I've never seen two that match. Uh, and it just goes to show, A, how long they were using the same standard case, uh, and B, just how much they iterated and redesigned these uh, throughout, I don't know, roughly two or three decades of production. Um, maybe not quite that long, but 2006 is probably when they stopped uh, making these. And um, I have some that are, you know, as old as the late 90s. I don't know. Maybe it was only a decade run. But, yeah, these things are everywhere. Um, but what I want to show you right now is the actual radio. Oh, man, I'm going to break the uh, neck here. <laughs> Hold on one moment. Problem solved. Um, take a look at this radio part of the board and note the size of it. Okay, there's my flyers comparison. Now, here's two other ones. These are both just a little bit smaller. Um, and to me, that indicates that this, this one is a little bit older. Um, we turn these over and you look at the trace traces on this PCB, uh, you can tell that was designed by a computer. Whereas when I flip over this other one, it's quite an organic shape, which to me suggests it was designed by a person, probably drawn out or 
carved out by hand. So if we go back to this one, um, basically all that we need to do is flip it around. If I remove my brass block that's holding up the actual TV part, two part, turn this guy around. And I was totally wrong. This one is definitely newer than the organic one. If I can put that back down gently, get the light on there properly. There you go. All right, so this one's a bit newer than uh, the really old one. So why did I buy this TV um, when I've already got two other ones? The other two stopped working. Uh, that's the short of it. Um, one of them, this one on the left, is, um, I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with this one yet. It stopped working after I took out the um, the tuner, which is this little silver part hiding right down there. Took that out and... Um, I don't know, I assume I have to jump some connections, uh, maybe with a resistor or something in order to get it working again. But I mainly bought this because I wanted to essentially see if there is any way I can design this Mac minus case in such a way that it'll fit pretty much any one of these generic TVs. but it really doesn't look promising based on how different not only the PCBs are, but the actual um, mounting of the CRTs tends to be quite different as well. So you can see this one has a very different brass bracket. comparison to this guy. This guy's got the more normal, oops, the more normal um, metal bracket there. Uh, so really it would be quite a challenge, but it's, you know, it's something I would love to make work. Um, especially because the more sort of one size fits all the case can be, then the better chance I have of having one of these keep working. All right, I remembered I have a three and a half millimeter to um, composite adapter thingy. So I have plugged that in and we're going to see if that gives us any kind of video signal. Forgot the switches in the back. Anything? Bueller? Oh, we've got nothing. All right. And because our device is off, let me turn this little thing to on. See what happens. No battery. Oh, because it was already on. I left it on. <laughs> okay, so I actually got it going. I just had to jumble which um, cable of the three was actually plugged in. That cable is specifically um, set up for the Raspberry Pi, which has a bit of an unusual pinout. But yeah, look at that. Our little TV's working. Geometry, eh. So blown out. I gotta figure out how to film CRTs better. Apologize for that. Let's try adjusting some geometry, or some uh, brightness. Oops. Vertical sync. Contrast down. Okay. 
helps you guys or makes it worse? Ooh, it makes it better for me, though. This is black level or overall brightness. I can't quite tell what that one's doing. All right, let's see this. Yeah, no sound, of course. I A, unplug the speaker. B, there's no audio input. You can hear me smashing buttons, though. What's all this about? Well, the whole idea is to run Mini VMAC off of a Raspberry Pi 02W, I think is what it's called. Um, and here you can see it now running on this new TV. Obviously I need to repair the geometry on this in order to get it um, displaying properly, but where is everything? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's Macintosh. Uh, operating system. I do, I think, need to either adjust the contrast on the set itself or potentially ooh, um, potentially uh, switch the operating system, which is System 7. Uh, I need to switch it to black and white instead of grayscale. Uh, that might help, you know, make the image a little bit clearer here, but this is really what it's all about. This is why people like me enjoy these old school black and white CRTs because they have such good contrast and um, no shadow mask. That's really the main thing. So um, I have this set now to boot straight into Mini v VMAC because the intent is to put it into the Macintosh minus case, but Essentially, what I'm trying to do here is, right now I've got it going through a bunch of adapters, um, but these red wires, red and black wires on this jumper cable are, there we go, um, composite out, um, or NTSC out, and now that we know this television can take NTSC in very easily, it'll be easy to potentially duplicate what we did here, which is composite input going to the jumper cable. Um, yeah, and then I also have a little voltage adapter to um, run the Raspberry Pi straight off of the television's board. So that's the plan. That's been the plan for two years now. And uh, delays, 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 but still trying to build the Mac minus.